Hello everyone, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to discuss why Gary Kasparov was considered as a legend for his aggressive play. Today, we are going to consider one of his brilliant game played in 1995. So I don't want to waste any further time. This, going, this video is going to be very critical if you are a 1d4 player and you'd like to play aggressive. So let's start. So we are playing with the white pieces or you can see Gary Kasparov is playing with the white pieces and he opens the game with 1d4. Whereas Rafael Vaganian, who was a very strong run master in the past, played the move e6, c4, d5, knight to c3, bishop to e7, knight f3, knight to f6. And I believe this is a pretty well common way to play. And after knight f6, white usually have two ways, either to play bishop f4 or to play bishop to g5. I personally feel after bishop g5, knight e4 is a very solid op option for the black side. So. Gary Kasparov decided to play bishop f4, which is, I would say, a bit lively. A bishop f4, and here black decided to short castle. And here Gary played the move e3, and now we have c5. So c5, c6, or even knight d7 are the moves in the position, but we have c5. So after c5, how to continue the position with the white pieces? First of all, if you take the d5 pawn, black can capture the pawn with the knight. And if you take the knight back, queen d5, and the position is pretty fine after cd, queen c5, rook is coming to d8. So that's why Gary decided to take on c5 first, and this is the main move. Bishop c5, and now he played the move queen c2. Like, you can also go for this idea with pawn takes, knight takes, knight takes, pawn takes, bishop d3, bishop b4 check, knight d2. This is also kind of an even position, but if you are an aggressive, aggressive player, you would like to keep the pieces on the board. So we have queen c2, a, a very interesting way to play. And after queen c2, basically white's idea is to play rook d1 and attack the queen. So after queen c2, black played knight c6, and now Gary played the move a3. So a3 is already a very sensible move, which covers the b4 square from the knight, or, with, or covering the bishop. Not allowing them to come on b4, because then there could be some ideas like queen f5, knight e4, basically putting pressure on the c3 knight, which we de really don't really want. So after a3, we have queen f5 by black once again, yeah. So after queen f5, first of all, you can't play b4. It looks like black is just losing material. But after bishop b4, it's winning for black because you can't really capture the bishop because your rook is hanging. Okay, so going back a bit, here, there are many ways to play, but uh, like rook d1 is kind of a, one of the common ways. But Gary decided to play the move long castle. That's how you do it. Long castle by Gary Kasparov. And it, it, it only looks like why white has done a long castle because black's all pieces are on the queen side. So how does it make sense for white to do a long castle? But guys, because of the pawn on e3, which kind of covers everything. And like white is also having his three pieces near the king side, which kind of finds it hard for black to attack on the king side, or uh, on the queen side. So here white side is already to generate a heavy attack on the king side. You're going to see after a couple of moves. So after long castle, we have the move bishop to e7 by uh, Vaganian. And why bishop e7? Like, uh, for example, how can he even continue the position is the question. For example, if you try to play something like a6, b5, already knight d2 is coming up with the idea of knight b3. So, like, pieces are all hanging up. So I personally believe bishop e7 was a very nice move. Defending the knight, and the idea could be to move the knight from the f6 square, put the bishop on f6, and try to launch some kind of attack on the king's queen side. So here, Gary already played a very strong move, which is h4. And it's a very interesting move, already trying to launch an attack on the king side. And here we have the move dc4. So here, what can you continue, how can you continue the possession is a question. Like, if you try to play rook d8, already g4 is coming up. Bishop d7, king b1. If you take the pawn, bishop c4, rook c8, g5, knight h5, bishop d6 g6, bishop e2, takes, takes, like this is just a sample line I'm sharing with you guys, knight e7, queen b3, bishop c6, taking the rook, rook d1, check, and like this was a, like this, basically this was a game, happened between Kasparov, which ended kind of, uh, I would say this position is slightly better for white. Though, we have dc4 in this game, and after dc4, we have bishop c4, so after bishop c4, we have the move b6. If black tries to play e5, attacking the bishop, and the pawn is already pr protected by the knight and the queen, so now you have bishop to g5, bishop com comes to g4, knight goes to d5, 
and the position is kind of even though it's slightly better for white i would say practically speaking up the question is why because i don't really find any problems in the white's camp the king can go to b1 and it looks pretty happy for white and white is at the same time also land trying to launch an attack on the king's side so now we have b6 and now we have knight to g5 so gary kasparov is already putting pieces near the king's side and now we have bishop to a6 by waganian if you try to play h6 which could also be a move but after knight c4 the position is already very fine for white because white has already centralized his pieces or already now h6 is a hook which can be weakened by g4 g5 and the position is already completely better for white so bishop a6 and now we have knight c to e4 once more like one more piece added up in, into the game and now we have the move g6 finally if knight e4 we have queen e4 attacking the knight and also threatening a mate so we have g6 if bishop g5 h takes it's a mate g6 we can take the bishop we can take the knight rook c8 it, it looks like white is losing the queen but we have bishop c7 takes takes rook c8 and now finally it looks like white is losing the queen but rook d8 check and this is winning for white because white is a complete rook up so going back bishop g5 is not the best move g6 can be played white can already continue the position via bishop a6 queen a6 and simply playing the move h5 in this position this is not the best way to play because after rook c8 bishop c7 rook c7 queen c7 rook c8 and this position is already slightly better for black so that's why simply playing the move like after bishop a6 just playing the move h5 in this position and white is already launching a deadly attack onto the black king which is completely winning and going back now a bit so so yeah, here knight into e4 did not happen in the game and now we have g6 after g6 we have knight f6 bishop f6 and now we have the move knight to e4 the knight falls back here bishop into a6 can all could have also been played takes queen c6 it looks like white white is winning material bishop c7 takes takes rook c8 and this is actually winning for black uh though it, it looks like it should be a draw because uh white is also having the both the rooks but the black squares are extremely weak though it's pretty hard for black to convert this position but yeah okay we have knight to e4 and now the bishop goes to e7 if the bishop goes to g7 you will realize now the d8 square is not really covered up so now bishop a6 can happen queen a6 queen takes knight and here e5 if rook c8 bishop c7 rook c7 and this is not really working because of rook d8 check now as the d8 square is not covered by the bishop so going back a bit here if e5 in this position first covering the uh, like attacking the bishop here white can simply play the move bishop e5 bishop e5 king b1 which is a completely better position for white white is having six pawns black is having five pawns and this is at least better so going back a bit so that's why we have bishop e7 and now we have bishop takes queen takes and now we have the move queen king to b1 if white decides to take on c6 it's not the best way to continue because after rook c8 bishop c7 takes takes rook c8 and the position is kind of even now after takes takes as i said the two rooks we have and this is actually an even position according to the engine as well so we have king b1 first moving the king away and now gary loves to attack so we have queen d7 protecting the knight if rook c8 this would have been much better okay and now already h5 would have been very strong the point here is if for example something like knight b4 attacking the queen queen b3 the knight falls back and after takes takes bishop e5 white is already threatening mate and if you even try to play f6 rook d5 is already very strong move takes queen d5 uh and i don't see any way like knight f6 is also coming up bishop f6 and basically the position is already ripped apart so going back a bit we have queen b7 and now we have finally h5 by gary kasparov launching a crazy attack we have rook c8 if we have e5 if black plays e5 we can take on g6 actually takes and now rook to h6 which is completely winning in this position already rook h2 is already winning because if you try to capture the bishop we have rook dh1 and how are you going to protect the mate is a question this is kind of a fourth mate in position black can't do anything so going back a bit now uh this is exactly what happens so after h5 we had rook c8 and now we have hg6 and now we have knight to b4 if hg6 is played 
queen c3 and it would have been mated f6 queen b3 and basically now black's pawn structure is all collapsing up knight d8 already first protecting f3 then prote protecting the knight and already rook into d8 is also coming up basically black's game is completely over okay so coming back we have knight to b4 now gary simply chopped off the h7 pawn as well king goes to h8 if king goes to h g7 bishop check f6 knight takes the pawn and it's a very interesting sequence to be true if you take the queen i can play rook over here which is completely winning okay even knight g8 is completely winning because the king goes to f7 and we can make a queen and the possession is already completely winning the engine says it's already made in 22 move like if you take the rook like it's rook h7 check let me show you one line rook goes to f8 bishop to g7 check maybe king goes to maybe over here bishop h6 check the finally king have to come over here rook g7 check takes takes and you can already realize it's going to be made so going back so going a bit back you can't take the queen if you take on f6 i can take the bishop and here takes takes i can make a queen check and i can win the queen on the next move and it's completely winning and if you take the knight with the rook i can capture the knight and basically you can't really capture the queen because i can make the queen and it's completely over so that's basically what happens yeah so now we have knight b4 gh7 king h8 and now we have bishop e5 check f6 and now we have knight f6 and after knight f6 once again this is a completely winning position so if knight c2 is played i can give a check the bishop comes in between i can take the knight i can take the bishop and basically the king can't really escape it's completely winning though white is losing the like white is queen down but it's completely winning queen g7 has to be played knight goes back the position is completely winning like takes take let me show you the position and you can uh basically it's completely winning the knight is kind of trapped over here the pawn is extremely strong the knight is check is coming up and the position is over you have to play rook f6 but after rook d2 you lose the knight the game is over so that's why uh if rook f6 i can play queen g6 which is a very strong move you can't take the queen because the rook is pinned up the game is over so here after knight f6 we have the move bishop f6 and now bishop and now we have bishop f6 by gary and now we have rook f6 and a b4 and uh after a b4 okay i think queen c3 is the best yeah maybe queen c3 and the game is completely over and it is actually a brilliant move queen c3 like you're just moving the queen and the, the point the whole point here is if you take the queen it's a check you have to it's, it's made basically yeah and if you don't capture the queen i can capture the rook and if you try to protect the rook somehow i can simply play queen c8 you lose the rook so you can't do anything if you protect this rook with the rook queen f6 still and you still get mated like this so basically that's why maybe i'm not sure but after bishop f bishop f6 and maybe queen c3 was played i'm not sure though so basically eventually over around here the file mogganian decided to resign the game and gary kasparov won so it was simply a master class by gary kasparov how aggressive he was like a player in his prime like he meant no fear like he even decided to short castle when black long castle when his opponent ha is having three pieces including king on the queen side but still he launched a powerful attack which the opponent replied had nothing and white simply went on to crush black's position completely tore apart it was simply a master class by gary kasparov so guys this was the game i think you can also play out this particular opening in your games because this is an opening which i'm working on and i think it's a very good opening to be played on your tournament ga games as well if you are an aggressive player so guys this was the game if you loved it if you enjoyed it make sure to like the video share this video with everyone and make sure to subscribe to our channel if you are new to our channel because i'm going to come up with these more interesting videos like this if you want anything on any particular topic, tell me in the comment box below and I'm going to come up, come up on that video. So I'm going to see you soon. So till then, stay tuned and keep watching One Shot Chess.